So, hello everybody, welcome to another video, and today I want to go over the changes that happened to semi-automatic weapons with the Lua Spray update. The TLDR here is that, well, before this update, most semi-automatic weapons just had far too much fire rate to effectively be used without some sort of an auto-clicker or a macro. Which is true, a lot of semi-automatic weapons did have a lot of fire rate, so much fire rate in fact that you couldn't reasonably be expected to fire as fast as the weapon would allow you to while also staying on target. So they cut down the fire rate on a lot of different semi-automatic weapons, but they compensated for it in other areas. The first weapon on our list is the Tiberon Prime. Here the fire rate went from 6 to 5, but to compensate for that they buffed the damage a little bit, going from 46 to 48 on all modes, and the semi-automatic mode has had its crit chance buff from 30% up to 42%. This is a pretty significant buff to the semi-auto mode, which is a good thing because it was lagging behind the burst fire mode quite a bit, since the burst fire mode has a really good crit augment you can use. So this makes the semi-auto mode just generally stronger, but it also makes it far more reliable for stuff like hunter munitions. Next on the menu we have the Comorex sniper rifle. Here the fire rate was reduced from 6 to 5, but to compensate for that the base damage of the weapon went from 87 up to 97 and the radio damage you get on the 3.5 time zoom went from 33 to 53. Now just in case you're not familiar with the Comorex, it is kind of like a dual sniper rifle, so you have a 2 time zoom that's really good for single target and you have a 3.5 time zoom that's really good for AO. And both of these modes are now better, though it's far more noticeable with sort of the AoE mode of the weapon where you use the 3.5 time zoom. Next up is the Latron Wraith, and the change here is fairly minor. The fire rate went from 5.42 to 5, which is hardly noticeable, and the damage was buffed from 60 to 62. This, as I've said, was fairly minor, and you're not really going to notice it because the Latron also kicks quite a bit, so you can't fire at maximum fire rate anyway, so all you get is just a little bit of extra damage, which is nice. And our final primary on the list is the Burst and Prime, where the fire rate went from 7.83 down to 5, but to compensate for that the damage has been increased from 36 up to 46. Now this is actually a fairly significant buff for the Burst and Prime, because more base damage means juicier slash proc, so the Burst and does feel considerably stronger, though it's one of the weapons where you can actually feel the fire rate reduction, since it increases the delay between bursts. Though it's not that big of a deal on the Burst and Prime, because if the fire rate really bothers you, you can just use the Gilded Truth augment. Then we have our first second secondary weapon, which is the Agjagara. Here the fire rate was reduced from 8.3 down to 5, but the damage has been bumped up from 30 to 36. This is basically just a straight up buff, the fire rate isn't noticeable at all, especially if you're running lethal torrent, so the Agjagara just got a bunch of extra damage. And that's really good for the Agjagara, because you're either gonna run a vital slash setup or a vital slash heat setup, so getting more base damage is top notch. Then we also have the Agjagara Prime, which just got a bit of a damage buff. It didn't actually get a fire rate change at all, so everything remains the same, but the base damage went from 36 to 38. This, I presume, was just done to give it a bit more base damage than the standard Agjagara, but that's still a good thing, because once again it's a slash vital weapon, so getting more base damage is just good. Moving on from there, we have the Agbolto, and here the change has been a bit more noticeable. So the fire rate went from 10 to 4.5, but the damage went from 40 to 64. This is a pretty massive buff for the Agboto because you can't really notice the change in fire rate, especially once again on a secondary with lethal torrent, so it basically just does 60% more damage now. Then we have a similar thing happening to the Telos Agboto as well, where the fire rate went from 10 to 5, but the damage went from 47 to 70, and the reload time actually went from 2.6 seconds down to 2 seconds. This is once again just a massive buff for the Telos Agboto because you can't really notice the a loss of fire rate, especially if you run lethal torrent, but it does considerably more damage and it has a shorter reload time so it feels better to use. And finally we have the Agboto Prime where fire rate went from 7 to 5 but the damage went from 32 to 44. This isn't as noticeable of a buff as it was with the standard Agboto or the Telos Agboto because the Agboto Prime was already doing good damage but once again you can't notice the loss of fire rate at all so you just get a little bit more damage. Next on the list is the Vasto Prime and I somehow don't have this one, so that's something I need to get, so sorry about that. But here the fire rate went from 5 to 2.5, but the damage went from 66 to 110. This kind of annoys me because I'm willing to bet that this is one of the few weapons where you can really feel the lack of fire rate even with lethal torrent, but you do get almost twice as much damage in return. Moving on to the Akvasto, where the fire rate reduction is pretty severe as well, it went from 8.67 down to 3.3, but to compensate for that, the damage has been increased from 58 to 98, 
and they reduce the reload time from 2 seconds to 1.6 seconds. Now here you can just about feel the lack of fire rate if you try to fire really fast, but most of the time you're not gonna do that anyway because the Aquasto kicks quite a bit. So this change is, once again, just a massive buff for the most part and it makes the weapon feel better as well since it now has a shorter reload. And the same goes for the Aquasto Prime where the fire rate went from 6.33 down to 3.3 but the damage went from 66 to 110. You can once again just about start to feel the lack of fire rate if you try really hard but for the most part it's just a massive damage buff. Next on the menu we have the Ek Bronco where the fire rate has been reduced from 8.33 down to 5 but to compensate for that they increase the damage from 40 up to 42 and they reduce the reload time for 2.6 seconds down to 2 seconds. The biggest change here is the reload time. You can't feel the lower fire rate and the higher damage is nice but the reload time is what really does it here. Because this is one of the, I refer to them as blow your load and hit the road kinds of weapons where you run in, you blurt out your entire magazine, you run out, reload, repeat. It's a really short range shotgun so this kind of a playstyle works well with it and a shorter reload allows you to do it much faster. Now after that we have the standard Lato, I don't actually have a full build for this somehow, but here the fire rate went from 6.67 down to 4.5 but they did buff the damage from 30 to 40. This is actually a really nice early game buff because once again you can't feel the change in fire rate at all, 4.5 is more than enough, but getting 10 extra damage at the start of the game is actually quite significant. And a similar thing happened to the Leto Prime as well, which I don't have here, the fire rate went from 6.67 down to 5 but they did buff the damage from 48 to 60. And the final version of the Leto that got changed was the Aklato. Here the fire rate went from 7.5 down to 5 and the damage was once again increased from 30 to 40. This is pretty much the same thing as the Leto, you can't really feel the lack of fire rate and it's just nice to have a bunch of extra damage in the early game. Next up we have the Bolto where the fire rate was reduced from 6.67 down to 3.33 but they did buff the damage from 40 up to 64. Now here you can just about feel the lack of fire rate if you really try but it's more than made up for with the extra damage. It's actually quite a solid weapon now that you can easily take into sorties. Moving on from there we have the Acrid where the fire rate went from 6.67 down to 5 but the base damage has been buffed from 35 to 43 which also includes the innate toxin status effect that you get with the acrid and just like pretty much every other weapon on this list you can't really feel the lower fire rate at all so all we got was just a nice damage buff for the acrid it's still not amazing it doesn't scale terribly well particularly against armor like in this clip right here but, you know, it's better than it was before, which is nice. Next on the menu we have the Magnus. This is actually a weapon that I'm working on right now, as you can see, so apologies for the incomplete build, but here the fire rate went from 5.83 down to 4.3, and they increased the reload time from 1.4 to 1.8, but in return they buffed the damage from 76 to 98. This weapon actually kicks quite a bit, so even if the fire rate was noticeable, it would still not matter, because, well, you don't want to fire at maximum fire rate anyway, because you will start missing missing shots. So it once again just got a nice damage buff, though I don't quite understand the reload time change because... like why? I, I just don't get it. But anyway, a similar thing happened to the Ack Magnus, where the fire rate went from 6.17 down to 5 and they increased the reload time from 2.4 seconds up to 3.2 seconds, but they did buff the damage from 76 up to 98. And the results are pretty much the same, the fire rate change isn't noticeable at all, the damage buff is nice and the reload speed change is just not great. It's actually even worse here, like having a 3.2 second reload time just doesn't feel great on any weapon. And we're slowly needing the end with the Magnus Prime, where the fire rate was reduced from 5.83 down to 5 and they increased the reload time from 1.2 seconds up to 1.6 seconds but they did buff the fire rate from 76 up to 98. Now here this is just a straight up buff because the fire rate wasn't that much higher to begin with and the reload is still relatively short so all you get is a nice damage bonus which works well with the kind of a build you will run on the Magnus Prime which will most likely have deadly maneuvers in it which is a mod that gives you insane amount of headshot crit chance whenever you roll dodge. And the final weapon on our menu is the Kuva Brack where the fire rate was reduced from 5.83 down to 5 and they increased the damage per pellet from 13 to 15. And since the weapon fires 10 pellets to begin with, it's kind of like the damage went from 130 up to 150. And this is once again just a buff, because the fire rate wasn't that much higher to begin with, so we just got more damage on it. And that is it for all the changes that were done to semi-automatic weapons with the Loa Spray update. I'm pretty happy with most of them, because the vast majority of them are just straight up buffs. The only things that are a bit of a bummer are some of the reload speed changes.
So I thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Let me know what you think about these semi-automatic changes in the comment section down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.